Good day. Thank you for standing by. Welcome to Aspen Tech's fourth quarter 2024 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are on a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star 11 on your telephone. You will then hear an automatic message advising your hand is raised. Please note that the conference is being recorded. I will now hand the conference over to your speaker host, Brian Denu. Please go ahead. Thank you, Olivia. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us to discuss our financial results for the fourth quarter of fiscal 2024, ending June 30th, 2024. With me on the call today are Antonio Pietri, Aspen Tech's President and CEO, and Dave Baker, Aspen Tech's CFO. Please note, we have posted an earning presentation on the IR website. This includes an explanation regarding the impact of ASC Topic 606 on our financial results. It also includes definitions of annual contract value, or ACV, bookings, and free cash flow, among other metrics. We ask that an investor to refer to this presentation in conjunction with today's call. Starting on slide two, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that our remarks today will include forward-looking statements. Actual results may differ materially from those contemplated by these forward-looking statements. Factors that can cause these results to differ materially are set forth in today's press release and in our annual report on Form 10-K and other subsequent filings made with the SEC. Any forward-looking statements that we make on this call are based on assumptions as of today, and we undertake no obligation to update these statements as a result of new information or future events. During this presentation, we present both GAAP and certain non-GAAP financial measures. Our reconciliation of GAAP to non-GAAP measures is included in today's earnings press release and investor presentation, both of which are available on our investor relations website. With that, let me turn the call over to Antonio. Antonio? Thanks, Brian, and welcome to everyone joining us today. Aspen Tech delivered a strong fourth quarter to finish fiscal 2024. We achieved these results on the strength of our innovation and focused execution on a solid pipeline of business, despite the persistence of a dynamic macro environment and cautious customer spending in some of our end markets. We were also pleased to see the benefits of our efficiency and productivity initiatives in the second half of fiscal 2024 come to fruition, delivering a favorable expense outcome for the full fiscal year. Our Q4 performance is a demonstration of what's possible as a result of our efforts over the past two years to integrate the Heritage Aspen Tech, DGM, and SSC businesses, while also transforming the DGM and SSC businesses. We believe these efforts are now largely completed, which, coupled with our broad portfolio of mission-critical products, position Aspen Tech well to execute and deliver on an attractive combination of ACV growth and best-in-class profitability going forward. Additionally, we continue to make good progress in our commercial relationship with Emerson, and we expect these efforts to lead to further benefits in fiscal 2025 and beyond. Turning to slide three for our Q4 and fiscal 2024 results. ACV was $968 million in the fourth quarter, representing 9.4% year-over-year growth and 3.5% sequential growth. Free cash flow was $335 million in fiscal 2024, slightly below our guidance, and $153 million in the fourth quarter. I would also like to provide an update on our exit from Russia, announced earlier today. We're exiting Russia following the U.S. government's recent announcement of expanded sanctions in the country, prohibiting, among other actions, the sale, service, maintenance, and support of enterprise management software and design and manufacturing software in the Russian market. As a result of these measures and our exit from the Russian market, we have written off certain assets that are related to our operations in the country. From an ACV perspective, we have written off all Russia ACV for a reduction of approximately $35 million in our total ACV balance as of the end of fiscal 2024. Our new ACV balance is $933 million after adjusting to reflect the impact of this reduction. We have included tables in the appendix of our earnings presentations to help bridge these numbers for investors. 
Bay will address the other related areas in his remarks. As you will remember, we moved to renewals only in Russia in fiscal 2024. The contribution from this business in fiscal 2023 made it apparent that it was no longer going to be a material was no longer going to be material to our overall growth profile resulting from the continued expansion of sanctions on the country. When removing all Russia ACV from our results, our fiscal 2023 growth rate improved 60 basis, po 60 basis points from 11.8% to 12.4% year over year, while our fiscal 2024 growth rate also improved 60 basis points from 9.4% to 10% year over year. Relatedly, attrition in fiscal 2024 was 5.6% when including Russia ACV, compared to 4.7% in the same period when removing Russia ACV. Now, returning to our results, I would like to emphasize the following regarding our Q4 and fiscal 2024 outcomes. First, as I mentioned at the start, our performance in Q4 demonstrates the benefit of our transformation and integration efforts to bring together Heritage Aspen Tech, DGM, and SSC, and investments made over the past two years. The outcome achieved was execution-driven, leveraging the platform built. We were also pleased to see the initial benefits from the sales expansion efforts made across the portfolio as we continue to advance and mature our business in these areas. Second, our innovation remains highly relevant and mission critical to customers in asset-intensive industries. Throughout fiscal 2024, we work collaboratively with many leading players across our end markets to advance our product offerings and develop new solutions. By working alongside our customers and remaining focused on accelerating their operational excellence, we continue to be a key strategic partner helping them to meet their efficiency and sustainability goals while navigating a dynamic microenvironment. Third and final, we remain committed to driving increased efficiency and productivity across the organization. With this focus, we have delivered lower expenses in the second half of fiscal 2024 relative to the first half of fiscal 2020, 2024. Looking ahead, we're confident in our ability to maintain expenses at current levels. We'll also continue to invest in strategic growth areas, including our DGM business. Turning to slide four, I will now provide an update on our suite's performances in Q4 and fiscal 2024. Please note that all ACV growth figures referenced for suites will be based on our 9.4% year-over-year growth rate in fiscal 2024, which does not reflect the impact of the write-off related to the suspension of commercial activities in Russia. The Digital Grid Management Suite, or DGM, grew by approximately 40% in fiscal 2024 to contribute 2.5 points of growth in line with our expectation. This outcome is a testament to the strength of our DGM suite and products and the early benefits from building out DGM's go-to-market capabilities to date. It also underscores how we remain well positioned to be a prime beneficiary of the substantial CapEx tailwinds to modernize, expand, and cybersecure grids around the world. Power outages such as those recently experienced by the city of Houston due to Hurricane Barrel highlight the need to create a more resilient grid in the face of more frequent and impactful weather events, including the capability to recover faster from them. These are the use cases that are recently launched Aspen Tech OSI outage management system was developed for and is now being deployed by utilities in North America. We also saw good momentum with utilities outside of North America as part of our Q4 success. In Europe, we signed our largest term software deal ever for the region to, up to upgrade a national grid operator's existing SCADA and EMS solution while displacing a competitor. This utility was in the market for a solution that is modern, adaptable, and most importantly, 
capable of helping them to ensure reliable real-time operations in the face of rapid renewables growth. In South America, we completed a significant term license deal with a long-standing customer that is also one of the region's largest transmission utilities. With networks across multiple countries that continue to grow in complexity, this customer highly values our grid management capabilities and trusts our ability to help them navigate an evolving landscape after more than a decade of working together. These are just a few of the successes we saw with BGM in international markets in Q4. As a core driver of this suite's growth, we're excited to build upon our successes globally going forward. The Subsurface Science and Engineering Suite, or SSC, contributed one point of growth in fiscal 2024 in line with our expectations. SSC had a strong Q4 as it benefited from solid execution as well as customers' positive reception to the tokenization of our SSE products. We continue to see solid demand, solid demand across the upstream market. During the quarter, for example, we further expanded our business with a national oil company in Asia for our, for our advanced petrophysical analysis capabilities in areas such as formation evaluation and reservoir characterization while also converting them from their perpetual licensing arrangement to term software and tokens. This customer now has access to the full set of product capabilities in the SSE suite, which we expect will lead to use of other products, resulting in increased usage and spend with Aspen Tech. Turning to slide five, our Heritage Aspen Tech suites contributed six points of growth in fiscal 2024 outperforming our expectations for 5.5 points of growth. The engineering suite represented 3.4 points of this total growth. Consistent with SSE, customer interest in our offerings remains solid in the upstream market. For example, we continue to expand our relationship with an upstream gas producer in Latin America that is leveraging our engineering suite capabilities to increase production from their gas fields by debottlenecking and optimizing their gas processing facilities. This equates to hundreds of millions of dollars in, in CapEx savings, resulting in one of the most important ongoing value creation use cases in our customer base. EPCs in particular are benefiting from growing backlogs driven by CapEx strength in traditional energy and sustainability. In Q4, for example, we won a large seven-figure deal with a long-standing EPC customer. By expanding access to the engineering suite, this customer can now further optimize their engineering man-hour costs, streamline their facilities design processes, and provide their customers with even more highly relevant asset design options, thereby improving their overall bidding prospects success. We also signed important sustainability-related wins in Q4, even as growth in this area moderated relative to the first half of the year. As an example, we expanded our business with a leading sustainable aviation fuel company that is using our engineering suite to meet its operational performance objectives while scaling up. We're excited about the opportunity to continue partnering with this company going forward as it continues to grow and explore additional Aspen Tech offerings. The Manufacturing and Supply Chain Suite, or MSC, contributed the other 2.6 points of hat growth in fiscal 2024. Customers continue to see our MSC suite capabilities as essential to improving operational and financial performance and achieving their sustainability goals. As a result, we saw solid uptake across MSC in the second half of fiscal 2024, and especially in Q4, despite this suite experiencing the most pronounced impact from the extended downturn in chemicals. In Q4, we won several deals for our new Aspen Unified Planning and Scheduling Solution and leading multi-unit optimization product, GDOT. For example, we signed a mid-seven-figure deal with a leading refiner in North America based on the strength of our technology, domain expertise, 
and dedication to co-innovation to support them in increasing operational efficiencies and creating a standardization and real-time visibility across their value change in their next phase of their digitalization journey. We also signed a large deal with a leading refiner in Europe. This represents a continuation of a deeply collaborative relationship with the customer who is now in the process of transforming their business from traditional refining to biofuels. Our ability to support bio component optimization through Unified was a key driver of our further expansion with this customer. Finally, the Asset Performance Management Suite, or APM, perform as expected, remaining flat year over year. As I mentioned last quarter, we have simplified APM's go-to-market strategy and are increasing our focus on certain market segments where the use cases lead to significant value capture for customers and produce high-quality ACV for Aspen Tech. As a validation of our strategy calibration, we saw meaningful ACV growth contribution from these market segments in the Q4 quarter, which mitigated the attrition experience from customers in markets where we no longer focus on. We're in the early stages of our new strategy and plan for some moderate sales headcount investment focused on APM sales in the market segments targeted going forward. On a slide six, I would now like to provide an update on our innovation. As I highlighted on our last call, we, ha we held a successful optimized user conference in early May. With a robust turnout, Optimize 24 was an excellent forum to reconnect with our users, align on shared visions of the future, and drive further collaboration and co-innovation opportunities. We were excited to have received lots of positive feedback from customers about the event, our strategy, and the Aspen Tech mission, leading to additional engagement opportunities in the quarter and adding to our existing pipeline of business. After Optimize, we continue to engage with customers around industrial AI, which is how we refer to our unique blend of artificial intelligence, domain expertise, and first principles-based innovation. With a well-established track record in the field, we're seeing an acceleration of interest from customers around our ability to deliver tangible value through our approach. This includes better modeling and optimization, decision support, predictive maintenance, and more. As we drive further innovation around industrial AI, we believe that it will continue to serve as an important contributor to our growth. Finally, I'm also excited to announce that we plan to release our new microgrid solution under general availability this quarter as part of our V14.4 update. While this solution is part of the DGM suite, we see a significant opportunity to expand it into downstream chemicals and refining markets, where there's increasing focus on ensuring resilient and reliable power supply as renewable energy is incorporated into their electrical networks. Turning to slide seven, I would now like to close with guidance. We start this year with a solid pipeline of pipeline of business and a strong foundation from the integration and transformation work over the past two years. With this phase of work now largely completed, our teams will be able to focus on capturing the opportunity in front of us. For fiscal 2025, we're targeting ACB growth of approximately 9%. This is based on a total ACB balance of $933 million as of the end of fiscal 2024, which reflects the removal of all Russia ACB. At the suite level, this includes expectations for approximately 5.5 points of growth from HAT, approximately 2.5 points of growth from DGM, and approximately one point of growth from SSC. We also expect attrition to be approximately 4.5% in fiscal 2025, which improves on our ex-Russia attrition rate of 4.7% in fiscal 2024. This guidance reflects the following micro assumptions. First, we expect end market demand trends to remain largely similar 
to what we saw in the second half of fiscal 2024. This includes continuing strength with utilities and energy, muted growth in chemicals, and a more moderate sustainability capex environment. Second, we expect the macro environment in fiscal 2025 to remain dynamic. This includes expectations for the continuation of cautious customer spending in the face of an, of an uncertain economic environment. For free cash flow, we expect approximately $340 million in fiscal 2025. I would note that we expect underlying free cash flow growth in fiscal 2025 to be meaningfully stronger than our guidance indicates due to several one-time factors that Dave will address in a moment. Finally, we aim to deliver flat expenses year over year. As I touched on at the beginning, we established solid traction in this area in the second half of fiscal 2024, and this fiscal 2025 expense plan further emphasizes our commitment to leading a best-in-class profitability business. As part of these efforts, we have identified additional opportunities to further streamline the organization and align resources across Aspen Tech. Today, we announced a workforce reduction of approximately 5% in the first quarter of fiscal 2025, including actions related to our Russia exit. We're supporting the departing employees with appropriate severance packages and other services to help them in their transition to new opportunities. These type of decisions are never easy to make. And on behalf of the company, I want to thank all impacted employees for their service and contributions to Aspen Tech over the years. With that, I will turn it over to Dave for a review of our financial results. Dave? Thank you, Antonio, and hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to join my first call with Aspen Tech. I'd like to start by thanking Chris Stagno for his excellent work in serving as the interim CFO role and working with the team to deliver a strong finish to our fiscal 2024. I'm excited to join such a talented team and to partner with Antonio, Chris, our finance leaders, and the broader executive team to continue to drive value and focused execution for Aspen Tech. I look forward to speaking with many of you in the days ahead. Turning to slide eight to review our Q4 and fiscal 2024 results. We grew ACV 9.4% year over year in fiscal 2024 and 3.5% quarter over quarter in Q4. This outcome was 40 basis points above our guidance for fiscal 2024 as we benefited from strong execution on a solid pipeline of business to close out the year. Total bookings were $416 million in Q4 and $1.16 billion in fiscal 2024, while revenue was $343 million in Q4 and $1.13 billion in fiscal 2024. Please note that our revenue is recognized under ASC Topic 606, and bookings and revenue are heavily impacted by contract renewal timing. Also, under ASC Topic 606, the impact of additional sanctions on Russia resulted in a modification of all existing contracts with customers in the country for a net reduction of $5.5 million in Q4 revenue. For profitability, on a non-GAAP basis, we reported operating income of $173 million in Q4 representing a 50.6% non-GAAP operating margin. For fiscal 2024, we reported non-GAAP operating income of $456 million, representing a non-GAAP operating margin of 40.5%. As Antonio noted, we saw strong traction on cost savings in the second half of our fiscal 2024, following more elevated expense outlays in the first half of fiscal 2024 to fuel our long-term growth. Net gap net income was $151 million in the quarter, or $2.37 per share, compared to $138 million, or $2.13 per share, a year ago. Non-GAAP income was $422 million, or $6.59 per share in fiscal 2024. 
Turning to our balance sheet, we ended fiscal 2024 with approximately $237 million of cash and cash equivalents and no debt. As of quarter end, we had approximately $23 million of cash in Russia that we are unable to transfer to other countries due to sanctions and their impact on banking in the country. We plan to use roughly half of this amount as we wind down our Russia operations in fiscal 2025, mostly in Q1, with the remainder staying on our balance sheet as restricted cash in non-current assets. We also, enter into a, into, we, we also entered into a new five-year, $200 million credit facility in Q4. On share repurchases, we completed our $300 million share repurchase authorization in Q4, repurchasing an additional 278,000 shares in 50, for $57 million. We also announced today that our board of directors has approved a share repurchase authorization for up to $100 million in fiscal 2025. We believe this is a prudent authorization amount that provides us flexibility to pursue M&A opportunities, which remains our top capital allocation priority, while also returning capital to shareholders. On a cash flows, we generated $155 million of free cash flow from operations and $153 million of free cash flow in Q4. For the full year, we generated $340 million of cash flow from operations and $335 million of free cash flow, slightly below our expectations due to higher cash tax. Turning to slide nine, I would like to now close with guidance. Consistent with, our, with prior fiscal years, we will continue to provide guidance on an annual basis. For fiscal 2025, we expect total ACV growth of approximately 9% year over year from our base of $933 million as of the end of fiscal 2024. This includes expectations for attrition of approximately 4.5% and market conditions that are largely similar to what we experienced in the second half of fiscal 2024, as Antonio noted. We expect a total bookings of $1.17 billion revenue of approximately $1.19 billion, gap net income of approximately $52 million, and non-gap net income of approximately $478 million. From a cash flow perspective, we expect operating cash flows of approximately $357 million and free cash flow of approximately $340 million. This includes expectations for cash tax payments of $135 million and higher capital expenditures related to office buildouts. Turning to slide 10, we have included a chart to help bridge our free cash flow guidance for investors. This includes two important considerations. First, we estimate that Russia free cash flow represented approximately $25 million in fiscal 2024. Second, we expect to use an additional $10 million in cash related to our Russia exit, as well as $8 million in cash related to our restructuring charge. Adjusting for these one-time items, we expect to grow underlying free cash flow by 15% in fiscal 2025. For a complete review of our updated fiscal year 25 guidance, please refer to our earnings presentation slides now available on our IR website. Turning to slide 11, I will now address our linearity expectations for the year. First, for ACV, we expect the cadence of new ACV to be similar to what we have seen historically. We also expect our Q1 sequential growth rate to be softer than we have seen in the past due to higher than normal concentration of attrition in the quarter. Second, the workforce reduction Antonio referenced earlier will impact our financials in the following ways. First, we expect to realize approximately $25 million in annualized cost savings from this action. This is aligned with our goal to keep costs flat while also investing in strategic growth areas. Second, we expect the restructuring charge of, to be between seven to $9 million and the, for the majority of this charge to occur in the first quarter of fiscal 2025. 
On free cash flow, we expect to generate the substantial majority of our free cash flow in the second half of our fiscal year, consistent with our historical results. We also expect free cash flow to be near break even in the first quarter, which is consistent with our historical results and also due to the timing of one off items related to our restructuring and Russia exit. Finally, we expect bookings of $681 million up for renewal in fiscal 2025, with $85 million up for renewal in Q1. In closing, we delivered a strong Q4 to finish our fiscal year. Look forward to fiscal tw looking to fiscal 2025, we remain focused on driving further productivity and efficiency across the organization, in line with our targets for solid top-line ACV growth and profitability improvement. Additionally, with a strong foundation in place for our, ex our expanded portfolio, we are confident in our ability to, ability to deliver value for customers while also navigating the current dynamic macro environment. With that, I will turn the call back to Antonio for his closing remarks. Antonio? Thanks, Dave. Uh, we, before we open it up to Q&A, I would like to announce that we will be holding an investor day on Tuesday, September 17th, near our headquarters in Boston, Massachusetts. With two full years since our strategic transaction with Emerson and experience in operating our expanded portfolio, we're excited to come together for a more comprehensive discussion of what we have accomplished, as well as how we're positioned for long-term growth. For those interested in attending, please reach out to our investor relations team for additional information. We will also webcast the event live for those who are unable to, to make the trip. With that, we'll open it up to questions. Operator? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you will need to press star 1-1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To withdraw your question, simply press star 1-1 again. Please stand by while we compile the q &A roster. Now, first question coming from the lineup, Rob Oliver with Bear, the line is open. Hi, Rob. Great. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, Antonio. Hi, Dave. Um, I had uh, two questions, with Antonio, one for you and then, and then one for Dave. So, uh, Antonio, um, I wanted to ask about um, some of the um, sales issues from last quarter, which you had cited, you know, that there were some sort of sales execution issues, um, I think, largely pertaining to the to the, the Heritage Aspen business, but correct me if I'm wrong there. And just wanted to get an update from you now heading into the new fiscal year where, you know, you guys stand relative to the kind of sales, sales leadership and your confidence and the ability um, to drive that organization. And then I had a follow-up. Thanks. Yeah. But let me look. Uh, uh, I'm very confident that uh, sort of, uh, addressed all the all the execution issues that, that we saw in, in Q3. Uh, and moving forward uh, is about executing with excellence. Uh, we quickly did an analysis after the end of Q3 to understand uh, where we had some of the challenges. Uh, of course, there was a much deeper review of um, deals and, and, and the strategies to close those deals. And, and the results that we achieved in the quarter are a demonstration of, of what's possible here. Great. Thanks, Antonio. I appreciate that. And then, um, <clears throat> Dave, um, if, if you'll allow me, just a two-parter for you. Um, one, on, I, the, I know you mentioned the attrition will be slightly higher in Q1 when you walked us through the linearity. Um, you know, why is that? And then attrition is coming down for the year, and what gives you the confidence that you can achieve that? And then the second is, you know, just more of an, an open question on you. Yeah, you've been in your seat now for a quarter, and well, wanted to get a sense from you of kind of where you see, you, you, you mentioned in your prepared remarks about value creation, and we'd just love to hear where, where you, what gets you most excited now that you have, you know, a sense of um, the organization. Thank you very much. Sure, Rob. Um, so the uh, attrition question first uh, with Q1, it really is just the timing of the renewals uh, and when they land in the year. And this year, there are more renewals land in Q1. Um, and we are confident that we will uh, see the attrition coming down, just uh, one, with the exit from Russia, that helps. And then secondly, just based on the renewals that we have and we can scope out, we have good line of sight there and are confident in being able to deliver that. Um, and then, secondly, the first you know couple months, it's been 
a lot of learning and working on partnering with uh, Antonio, the executive team, as well as finance to really understand. And as you look at going forward, it really is, uh, you know, continued focus on the execution that we saw in Q4. And uh, there's still work for us to do around, uh, you know, bring some of the back office uh, uh, systems together, uh, as well as some of the uh, footprint consolidations and, and then just generally working with the team as we look at our operations and how we can continue to uh, drive efficiency there um, uh, across the, the, uh, the entire organization. Very helpful. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And our next question coming from the line of Andrew Elvin with Bank of America. Yelan is open. Andrew. Hi, this is uh, David Ridley laying on for Andrew. Um, okay. you know, look, I think ACV growth rate X Russia uh, seems to have kind of bottomed here or stabilized with both third quarter and fourth quarter up 10% year over year. I, I guess with easier comparisons ahead, you know, what factors are you kind of seeing or baking into guidance uh, to have that slowing ACV growth for fiscal 25? Yeah, well, let me look at it. as we said in our in our prepared remarks. Um, uh, certainly, we still believe that there's a, a, a an uncertain macro environment uh, uh, out in the uh, out in out in the in, in the marketplace. Uh, uh, but equally, uh, uh, you know, we're more cautious on uh, the demand that we would expect uh, to see. Uh, from uh, sustainability capex, uh, we had a strong first half of the year in, in fiscal 24. Uh, we had a slower uh, uh, benefit from sustainability capex in the second half of fiscal 24. Uh, I think we'll con we, our assumption is that we'll continue to see that sort of environment, the second half of fiscal 24 into into fiscal 25. Uh, therefore, uh, there's sort of a half year uh, uh, impact there. And considering uh, uh, some of the reports that we've seen and, and uncertainty uh, around demand, I think we're being more cautious uh, around the refining demand. We saw very strong uh, demand from refining in the second half of fiscal 24. Uh, we've seen reports of compressed margins in refining, but overall, uh, it's just a, a slightly lower expectation around around refining demand. But but overall. Look, uh, uh, where we where we sit today, we feel very good about that nine percent, uh, and we'll certainly uh, execute throughout the year to uh, uh, to exceed that number. Got it. And then, you know, just touching on the commercial relationship with Emerson, um, you know, as you went through the year, did the kind of ACV contribution that you got through that channel? improve and and how are you thinking about that within the fiscal 25 guidance thank you yeah look uh, certainly uh, uh, now now that we've closed out fiscal 24 uh, we can see that uh, some of the adjustments uh, that we made on on our joint go to market activities at the beginning of fiscal 24 started to pay off uh, especially in the second half of the fiscal year uh, and now even here into Q1 fiscal 25, we see uh, some solid opportunities that are resulting from our joint go-to-market activities, and we would expect to to see uh, a greater benefit from um, really uh, what is a, a developing uh, a, a comfort between the two companies on 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 how we need to be operating in the marketplace, the strengths of each other. And, and how we can we can leverage each other's capabilities and technology uh, to create a, a one plus one equal in three. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And our next question coming from the line of Dylan Becker with William Blair. Helen is open. Dylan. Hey Antonio. Hey Dave. Thanks for the questions. You're a nice job. Um, Maybe first uh, for Antonio, you called out a customer realizing 100 million plus in, in capex savings, pretty significant, obviously ROI here. 
I wonder, despite kind of that, that challenging macro backdrop, you're seeing how those customers are pairing the potential savings uh, around some of their decisioning efforts, particularly if, if large kind of capital projects maybe are a bit more challenged to, to kick off throughout uh, fiscal 25. Well, I mean, look, this is the this is the beauty of our of our technology in that uh, the 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 use case that, that I reference and it's hundreds of millions. I won't give you the specific number because it's uh, actually the, this customer did present at Optimize and and and, and I know you were there, uh, Dylan, but uh, and and he presented this specific use case. Um, you know, in the in the face of challenge capex. Uh, this customer uh, is using our technology to find ways to de bottleneck their existing uh, gas processing facilities and optimize uh, optimize them for for uh, throughput, and therefore um, they are generating uh, incremental throughput through that through those facilities that saves them building a new facility that would cost them in the hundreds of millions of dollars and that's how that uh, use case comes about so 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 look uh, uh, there's different ways that our customers uh, innovate and, and and use our software to create value and and i think this is uh, this is a great example of what's possible with our technology okay that's great that's helpful thanks antonio and then maybe um somewhat for dave but maybe antonio you've been here for a while too um, calling for this significant kind of operating leverage growth on the back of some, some flat expenses. You've done this uh, in the past, right? So how should we think about uh, kind of where that leverage is coming from, sales efficiency, synergies, uh, and, and maybe how, how to think about the potential balance here between that margin leverage and the ability, as you guys kind of called out, to, to optionally reinvest or use that as an optionality lever, if you will. Um, in the potential in, uh, situation where, where the environment does improve throughout the balance of the year. Thanks. Yeah, well, let me let me first speak to uh, look up, up, uh, to to my experience, and and, and Dave can chime in. Uh, look, uh, I, I I I've always believed, and and we know that one of the the, the great uh, uh, strengths of of Aspen Tech is 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 the leverage that we have in the model to increase sales with a, a very little incremental spend uh, as long as we're driving um, innovation into the market. Uh, so so we continue to see that. Uh, and, and I would argue, I mean, Q4 had a big component of that. Um, if you look at the DGM outcome that we achieved in the fiscal year and in Q4, uh, a lot of the a lot of the incremental uh, ACV, the growth in ACV, uh, came from um, uh, aftermarket sales to customers uh, were th that already had an installed uh, SCADA system from DGM, the Monarch system, and an EMS solution. So the ability to expand sales with those customers. So so ultimately. Uh, I think our, our relationship with customers, innovation, and the token licensing model in that any innovation or new product that we develop or acquire, we can put into the suite and immediately it's available to every customer of Aspen Tech, uh, uh, create a, a, a highly leverageable uh, go-to-market model. And that's a that's a basis for our belief that that we can run a best in class profitability business here over time as as we as we scale um, the the DGM SSC and and we continue to grow the Aspen Tech business. That's great. Thanks, Antonio. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And as a reminder, to ask a question, please press star one one. Now, next question coming from the line of. Devin A. with KeyBank Capital Markets. Your line is open. Hey, thanks. This is actually Jason. I, I was able to make it. Um, hey, Jason. Maybe, um, maybe a couple clarifying questions. So um, if we look at the growth in Q4, uh, Russia, uh, with Russia and without Russia, it looks like Russia is a tailwind, uh, uh, you know, excluding the tailwind. Is that just because Russia just wasn't growing and it was kind of a drag? 
Yeah, as we said, I mean, in, in fiscal, in, in, we said in the remarks, in fiscal 23, um, it was clear that, that Russia wasn't going to be a contributor uh, to growth um, based on the outcome that we achieved. Uh, and, and the fact is that more or less the same outcome was, was experienced in, Q, in fiscal 24. Um, the, the, the benefit to the growth rate is that when you, when you take out the ACV that existed in Russia, then your denominator becomes smaller and therefore your numerator produces a larger, uh, a larger number, which is a, 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 a faster, a greater growth rate. That's, that's the benefit of that. Okay. Got it. Um, basic math. Got, um, yeah. Same you know, yeah. Um, uh, and then the, re the restructuring, uh, is that only impacting maybe your employees in Russia or is that restructuring other areas? Um, just, just wanted to clarify. Oh, no, it's, it, this is broad, uh, this is broad base uh, across the company. The fact is that the, the Russia component is, is small. Um, uh, uh, this is across every function and, and region. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And our next question coming from the line of Naysaw Name with Baron, Baron Burke, Yelena Sulpin. All right. Uh, thank, thank you for giving me, question, giving me questions. Uh, I've got a, a couple, if I may. Uh, firstly, starting with uh, the chemicals verticals, please. Uh, you know, it'll be great to get it'll be great to get an update on uh, the macro dynamics there. Uh, we've now hit you know anniversary of uh, when you guys started as well, the, the the macro cycle started affecting your numbers. So it'd be great to understand or if you feel like uh, the down cycle has now hit a trough there going forward. And then secondly. Um, you know, this is now a few quarters that you're able to call out competitive wins in DGM. So it'd be great to uh, hear from you, you know, how, how you're able to uh, achieve these competitive wins, wins in this uh, product market. Uh, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, let me first address the, the first question. Uh, look, um, uh, the chemicals market continues to be, um, uh, from an OPEX standpoint, continues to be uh, uh, depressed going through the trough. Uh, we have seen a couple of uh, positive announcements from uh, chemical companies uh, where they're starting to see a pickup in demand, uh, but uh, uh, very preliminary uh, and, doesn't, and in our opinion doesn't change the trajectory of what we expect to see in fiscal 25, which is more of the same that we saw in fiscal 24. So our assumption for the fiscal year is, we, is that we will see little contribution from chemicals. And I just want to point out, I mean, chemicals is about 20, 22% of our total ACD, uh, which means that in a normal year, we would probably see about 20% of our growth coming from chemicals. So, so there's a significant component of our growth that, that is not uh, producing, of, of our business that is not producing. And when it starts to pick up, uh, we, we would expect to see that benefit in a, in, a, in a meaningful manner to our overall growth rate. Uh, when it comes to DGM, uh, look, uh, in a way, uh, the OSI business prior to Emerson and Aspen Tech, uh, even though it was a 30-year-old business, was a new kid on the block. And uh, uh, they developed a very contemporaneous technology uh, with great capabilities, modern technology, a great cybersecurity, that when it's compared to the technology of, of the incumbents, it certainly uh, outshines them uh, from, a, from a capabilities, uh, deployability, configurability, ease of use, and so on and so forth. I have been in many control rooms of our customers in DGM over the last 18, 24 months, and, and you can see how happy these customers are with the, uh, with the dashboards and the user interfaces and everything that they use uh, uh, around DGM. So basically, it's just, uh, it's just more contemporaneous technology, uh, more modern, more cyber secure, uh, more applications on top of the base SCADA system. I, in my remarks, I, I referenced uh, outage management, which is a, a new application that is becoming incredibly important for utilities in order to be able to pinpoint outages and recover recover from them faster. 
There's also capabilities around uh, distributed energy resources, uh, especially um, uh, the the use case around uh, a battery, energy battery storage or or renewable energy. So so it's a combination of factors and and just want to point out that uh, when these utilities uh, go out for uh, to upgrade their systems. Uh, they're either upgrading their system with the incumbent or they're choosing someone else that therefore results in a displacement. And it is in those situations where an OSI is chosen that we displace because we're building our business, we're building our installed base, uh, and that will take you know many more years to, to, to accomplish, but, we, but it is the opportunity that we have ahead of us here. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. And again, to ask a question, please press star 1-1. One, one. And our next question coming from the line of Joshua Tilton with Wolves Research. Line is open. Josh? Hi. Hi. This is Arsenion for Josh. So I just wanted to understand the 4Q booking coming in. I had to think of expectations. Uh, what drove that? And then on the flat bookings guidance for 2025 on a reported basis, not adjusting for Russia and 24 bookings, and your renewal bookings 100 million higher than 24. Does the guidance about any conservatism in new bookings, in addition to reflecting the impact of discontinuing Russia operations? And just a quick follow up. Yeah, well, let me no doubt that the guidance for fiscal 25 assumes uh, the, the discontinuation of Russian operations and the write off of the ACB, which also means we're writing off uh, equivalent uh, amount of bookings associated with that ACB, and so you have to adjust for that. Uh, I also want to remind you that uh, our, our, the profile, our bookings uh, year to year is not consistent, it's, it's a mountain range, um, and this year uh, we have coming up, uh, uh, we have the bookings that we have, uh, we have a concentration of bookings in, 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 in Q1, but uh, the important thing to note is that just because uh, we have a certain amount of bookings doesn't mean necessarily that those bookings generate an equal and proportional amount of growth in ACB. Uh, in the bookings, there's a combination of attrition, there's a combination of flat renewals, uh, and there's a combination of growth from some of those bookings. And depending on, on the contracts that are coming up for renewal, is, 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 we, we produce a certain outcome. From, from the bookings that are coming up from renewal, and then we have to go generate incremental growth from the existing contracts that are not uh, coming up for renewal. And, and the fact is that most of the growth that we experience in, in any given year is, is from contracts that are in the middle of the, of the contract as opposed to coming up for renewal. I don't know if that answered your question. No, no it's it on the forward bookings estimate, but just in terms of 4Q bookings, I think it was above expectations unless I misunderstood something from the presentation. I just wanted to clarify that. What drove that outperformance? Oh, the, the Q4 outperformance? Yeah. Well, let me look at... Uh, so so, so this, is, this is the thing about uh, uh, giving you all um, uh, uh, the, num the bookings number, whether it's in a quarter or for the year. The fact of the matter is that uh, we can also do early renewals of contracts that are in the future. Um, and uh, there was a, a contract that uh, wasn't supposed to renew until this fiscal year, fiscal year 25, that was accelerated into Q4 as part of uh, a, a, a bigger transaction for growth in, in that was signed in the Q4 quarter. So there was a, a we package uh, incremental growth with an early renewal of a large contract, which then generated um, uh, a larger amount of bookings that, that were not expected in the initial number that we gave you. Got it, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. And I see there are no further questions in the Q&A queue at this time. I will now turn the call back over to Mr. Antonio Petri for any closing remarks. Uh, thank you, Operator. And thank you to everyone for joining the call today. Uh, we will be attending the Piper Sandler Growth Conference in the second week of September. As I mentioned earlier, we will also be holding an Investor Day on September 17th. 
uh, please reach out to our investor relations team for more information on this event. Um, we look forward to catching up with many of you soon. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and we will see you on the road. Thanks. That's our conference for today. Thank you for your participation, and you may now disconnect.